I remember being a little kid and having a blast taking part in this orienteering competition. It was always my most anticipated event of the year. And this year my goal is to podium. Oh my god! We have arrived. We have arrived in Aluxna and it's cold. Good morning everybody, this is day one of a couple three days and we have just woken up and I'm just going to show you the surroundings. As you can see there is the Aluk Snow Lake, very beautiful and I have no clue how is all the tents going to fit here because the territory is quite small. We'll see in the evening, you know. But now we're heading over to the first race location. I ate porridge in the morning and about half an hour ago I ate bread with cheese and I hope it's going to digest before the race so let's pray for that we have arrived basically this is the train it's the three days and it's quite tough so my goal is not to get lost I mean <laughs> obviously so this is the map I was given on day one. Basically I warmed up and I was super nervous because I was excited to go in the forest but I was scared of making any mistakes. As you can see my, my distance was 7.5 kilometers in length. As you can see the, the terrain is quite green and with a lot of terrain. So it was going to be tough. Uh, the first two controls went really nicely but the, the next control was actually the cliff that interrupted my emotional state at the time. You just go forward and you read out the train and you find it. Probably you go to the left a little and uh, actually Andres Villans went this way and I think it, it was okay. Uh, what, what I saw first is this road right here which goes quite some ways around but it was easy, it was quite runnable and um, basically I went right here I started being a little confused well I sh <laughs> I knew where I was but I don't know why I was confused I went into the forest my plan was to head beside the hill to the control and I basically read the hill which was to my left and I was on the control but wait where is the control I did not see it at all I have no idea how I did not see it I went a little forward went back Still, no control. I cannot see it. I don't know where it is. So I was super scared because my yearly goal, maybe it is going to fail miserably just because of this control. I went back, I met my mother and you know that stereotype where you are trying to find something in your house and it isn't in the location you're looking for. You just call your mom. Where's the phone? Not here, not here. Mom! Where where is my phone? But I looked there! Oh, oh it is there? Oh shit, yeah it Mom, how do you always know where it is? Mom, where is the thing? And she comes around and says It should be right here. You look in the place yet again and the phone or the control in this case is indeed there. It was stupid, it was scary, it was dumb, but I <laughs> found control and um, I ran so hard because I was super, super scared of that control mistake, you know. Um, as you can see, it was quite easy, well, yeah, this was sort of a mistake, but I, 
I was just nervous. I, I tried to run as hard as I can. Next up, we have another long one. As you can see, from five to six. And I did, a se I did as I was planning to. Basically, I went to the uh, planes. Well, actually, I, I saw this hill. I over ran over it. I saw this hill and basically went to this island and found a control like that, which was really good. The next one is quite long, you know, and right here you can see that my mind was starting to get hungry and thirsty, so I really wanted to have something to drink. As you can see, I made a huge mistake, I have no idea how. I went to the left and I was like, fuck, what am I doing here? So I ran, I drank some water, and I kept going, and as you can see, I made stupid mistakes on this control. Went through the green, I don't know why, and found the control. Those were the major mistakes throughout the course. As you can see, the ninth control is actually quite hard as well. Uh, well my initial plan was to go right here, besides the opening, and get to this road, and by this road, come right here, and find control like that. It almost happened, <laughs> as you can see, I went and I got lost, and I don't know how, but I got really lost, and uh, lost some time there. But the rest of the distance went really well, which I'm proud about, like the 13th control, as you can see, I went, it went great. And the sport, the sport at the end, you're going to see what, what that was. But that was fast. And that is how the distance, or day one, went. So I just finished the race. And it didn't, well it went really good actually. But I couldn't find one control just because I didn't see it. It's super, super stupid, you know. But it was amazing. And uh, towards the finish line, there's this, comp like, this competition where the fastest man of, and woman who will run the last control to the finish line will get a prize. And I tried very hard on that one and I finished, I ran the finish in 10 seconds and it shows 1 minute 27 minutes per kilometer pace, which is insanely fast. We're going to take a swim now because it's super hot now after the race. Yeah, like 67 minutes for day one. We'll see what is the time for the first or third place and yep, let's go. As you can see, in my group, I got the fifth place, which isn't quite bad, you know. I lost at least like seven minutes on that control, so tomorrow I'll do better, you know. And Paul, he got the third place, which is really good. As you can see, the day is wrap wrapping up, the day is beautiful. So basically we're just walking here and Sebastian noticed that this church is in affiliation with the Illuminati gang. Like, look at it. He beat the second fastest man, the eight-year-old, by one minute. Timothy, how did you do that? I, I just uh, run fast and I'm short. That is nice. He has such a future.
Okay, so it's the end of day one and I'm really tired. My legs are hurting real badly. I need some sleep. And currently it's karaoke in the background, so it's going to be a tough task to fall asleep, but I'll try my best. Tomorrow is going to be a new terrain and I'll try my best to not get lost this time. Because the mistake I made today was stupid. Stupid. Yep. Good night. My story is at 11.11 and we need to go now, otherwise I won't have enough time to warm up. Today, it's going, the terrain is going to be not as um, profound and not as prominent, so you have to be careful and go into the direction. That is what I'll try to do. We have arrived at the location, as you can see there is there are a lot of cars here and I have to go in the forest in like 55 minutes. Okay, so I have warmed up. I was excited to go into the forest and not make the mistake again. I was given the map and I knew that it was going to be quite runnable, as you can see from the map itself. It is not green at all as it was in day one. It went really good actually, what ended up happening is I just went like right here, found control, I made some minor mistakes here and there, but throughout the course it was like an, a, the perfect orienteering for myself. Uh, there were some mistakes at the controls, like I ran up this hill and I had to go down, find control, so to, to right here I just took the direction and ended up on this corner. It actually was pretty good, because as you can see there is a big, a huge depression, so I ran around it. And I couldn't find the control for like 20 seconds, but I did eventually found it. As you can see, these were some hard controls, but I I found them like really easily. I was like, at, at, up until this point, I had made some mistakes, which in total made like a minute of mis in mistakes, which was not bad at all. I mean, I was happy. I was hyped, so I kept going. I saw this hill. Yeah, I saw this hill. I don't know why I kept going forward. But I had to go to the right, so another minor mistake. Anyways, right here, I, I hit my leg super badly. I'm going to talk about it a little later. Um, but this was quite interesting because from the 12th, I was going to 13th. But in my mind, I don't know why, I thought I had to go to the 14th, the last control. So I went in the direction and basically I was going right here and I stumbled upon a point, a control, and I looked at its number and it, I noticed that it's a control I have to take. So I was super lucky right here that I ran on this control and, <laughs> and found it. And eventually the finish rolled around. I got the first place, which is super cool. I surpassed amazing orienteers like Karlis Stradinj, Andris Svilons, Rolfs Ejordinj and like, oh yeah, Karlis Neymans also, like they, all of them made a little more mistakes than me, so I'm super happy about my performance. Okay guys, just finished the race. It went well. You know, I didn't have any like huge mistakes, but uh, as you can see, those little minor, a few tens of seconds uncertainty mistakes did cause my time to be a little more higher than it should be. You know, I really enjoyed this race, but I hit my legs so badly, it hurts. So basically I was I was running through the forest and it was towards the finish of the race and I was quite tired, you know, and I saw this big log um, about half a meter above the ground and basically what ended up happening is I actually thought, before the jump, I thought, imagine if I don't make this and I did not make it, I was, I hit my, my foot on the log and I fell like from one meter height on my back, <laughs> that shit happened. Just check the result. I'm still number one. Insane. So happy. Uh, no, uh, this guy today. Yeah.
Yet again, beat the second place by one minute. Insane. Okay, as you can see, there is Carlos Neyman is, is in the front after the third radio control. I think I don't know how it's called, but I'm still looking good. The place. Okay, here's the plan. I need to rest because in like five hours the, the sprint starts. My leg is still hurting. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So this is Team Janovi. Our goal is to get the the best family place. No, the award. I don't know how it's called. But we have a good chance on winning that. Last year we got the third place. And this year I think we're going to only improve. So we'll see after day three. Okay, so, so now we're on our way to city center. And uh, in my group there's only five people. <laughs> and uh, pro probably the fastest ones aren't running just because they want to save their power for the following day and I should have done that because my leg is hurting but you know there are three days each year where you have to beast and kill yourself three days it's cup three days I got them Pegasus 35 I'm ready ready to sprint in like four minutes I need to go so let's go let's do this <laughs> so that is how that went. Speaking of my leg, I think I will do quite fine tomorrow because while I'm running I don't feel it at all. So that's good news at least. So in the sum of the two days, I am currently in the fourth place, which is insane, you know? Well, considering that the four best Latvian runners are currently in Belarus, running in the European Youth Orienteering Championships, good luck to them, but um, it's, in, it's good, like, I am only half a minute behind Carlos Stradinj, who is actually, like, insanely good at orienteering, so I feel good about myself and and like 20 seconds behind Andris who is also really good a really good orange <laughs> As we can see, Ejordinj is in the front, is in the lead by almost 10 minutes, which is insane. I think we're not going to catch him. There is Carlis, Andris, Jakobs, and Carlis, kind of in the same location as you can see. So we'll see who will win today. Oh, 
All right, so day three. I have started running in like 45 minutes. So let's go, day three. Welcome everybody to day three. I dressed up as it was going to, the terrain is going to be shitty as hell. There is going to be a lot of marshes, there are going to be a lot of hills and it ended up being the right thing. Thank you dad for telling me that. Look at the terrain. It is so interesting, like oh my god. The only mistakes I made were towards the end. At the start it went really well and I just ran into the direction, I found the fourth, like there were some minor mistakes because I, I don't know why I went through that marsh, but eventually I ended up losing a minute on, on this one, which was quite saddening. As you can see, this is another mistake I made, like two mistakes in a row, because on the fifth one, I sort of leaned towards the left side, which was wrong, and I had to correct my direction, ran over this stupid marsh, which was hard to run over. Uh, then on the sixth one, it was super stupid, like, as you can see, I went, like, when I was almost at the control, I don't know why, I thought I had to go to the left. So I go, I went left, and I saw the marsh on the bottom of it, and then I was like, man, why? And I had to go back, and that was another, like, minute or two lost on that one. Um, as you can see, it went quite well, except for the ninth, or the tenth. <laughs> it seems like I went just to have a drink which was not my plan initially, but that almost ended up happening, although I didn't grab a glass of water because I was so stressed. Um, at this point of the race, I still had to find more than five controls, and I was... I had given up, you know, because the point of this last day was to overcome and surpass my rivalries, like Andres Villans, Karl Stranich, and I had given up at control 10. It was super tough, the train, and the orienteering was also like insane. As you can see, the 12th went well, the 13th al almost well, but right here, I I did quite well on the 15th, which gave me confidence on the 16th, and as you can see, I don't need confidence, because that messes up my brain, and I just, I need to be careful on every control in the future. Um, actually, on the 15th, Andres Villans, got lost right here when, while I was going to the 16th I had given up <laughs> I was seriously like so low on my spirit that I thought I won't even make the top five well I made some effort on fi uh, on running faster towards the finish line and I was going to the finish line and I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe what happened after I finished I ran fast I ran fast and when I finished I looked at the paper they gave me and I couldn't be more shocked because I had beaten Karl Stranich by over a minute which was my necessary time to gain. It didn't go well, but you know what? For those who had to surpass, they did worse than me, so let's check the results, you know. I think I actually beat Karl Stranich by 3 seconds in the sum of all 3 days, which is insane, what? Is that's ridiculous, you know? Oh my god! Did, dude, I, I think I have just podiumed. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I podiumed! What? I beat Karl Strange by three seconds. That's first of all. And Andre Svilans is also... He, he's lost in the forest. I mean, he's, he's trying to find... Uh, the control for 20 minutes, so... Yes! I did it! I did it! That is my year, yearly goal achieved. Insane. So happy. So is the Ripuj, my mates. It's W O T R O V E T K A P A. Paul got the third place! Like, yeah, I didn't thought that... I would get on podium. Yeah. Team Jana with this beast thing out here. Team C got the second place. Sebastian got, got the fourth place. And he got the third. third. And I got the second, so.
otrajā vietā no Sigulda takām Timotejs Janovs. So that's it. The Kappa 3 days Orange Learning event 2019 has ended, has finished. And I did it. I got the second place, which is really good. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, us as a family, Team Janovi, <laughs> we got the third place, the, the third best family here in the competition, which is great. You know what? That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope I will see you all next time, maybe, when I will get the motivation to record something similar. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. So Goodbye.